Welcome back to the Art Lang Show. Downtown Chattown in a frenzy. Joining us now, real funny comic, tours the world doing stand up. Yes. Works sir. a lot with my buddy Chris DeStefano. Yeah. The great Giannis Papas. Am I saying that right? You are. Yeah, I answered anything in the. If it's close, <laughs> if it's phonetically close, I'm used to it. Is that Greek? It's Greek, yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn. You're from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah I can tell you got the Brooklyn yeah, accent. Yeah, you know, come on. If someone asks, I gotta, I gotta up it a little bit. Can I get hacky as hell and ask if your family is in the diner business? Dad, well, yeah, of course. Okay, that's, that's like good. A, my grandfather actually owned a diner. He had the, at one time he had the biggest diner in New York City. So no kidding. What diner? It was called the Normandy Diner. Where? My grandfather, long time ago. I mean, I mean, it must have closed like. In the 40s. They must have done a lot of a lot of cash there, man. Yeah. A lot of coffee. Was it was in Manhattan, I guess, It was right? in Manhattan, yeah. That's cool as hell. See, 1940s Manhattan, the biggest diner. I love stuff like that. Yeah. Biggest yeah, diner. well, the diners, being from Jersey, I love. I would love to have family in the diner business. We used to treat it like getting Coke. Like, I had a buddy who worked at the diner uh, by us, and he would get the chocolate syrup that only diners <laughs> use for their chocolate milk. Jay's, Jay's chocolate syrup. And the distributor only sold direct to diners. You couldn't get it in stores. Mm. So we would get like he would he would he would glom it from the, the and he would sell it to us like it was blow. I mean, like <laughs> you know, we got a big vat of milk. We pour a Jay's chocolate syrup. I love that. That's where it all started. Not chocolate to, syrup to, doesn't take up your appearance with chocolate milk. <laughs> but it says you. T it says specifically that you tour the world. Now what does that mean? You've been all over it's the world. It's hyperbole. Oh, okay. Uh, it's uh, I uh, I uh, <laughs> been I've been to Scandinavia a few times. I've been for what festivals or for something? Comedy, yeah. Like I, I just met a Swedish comedian. I started going there, and uh, I started doing pretty well there. They kept inviting me back. Yeah. Then I did a festival in Denmark. I just did TV in Denmark. About, I did the Edinburgh thing in Scotland once. I'm about to do that. And this I did year. stand up in London a couple. Of, it's great, man. It's really fun. It yeah, really the, is. The crowds are good. I don't like London though. London's like if New York went goth. <laughs> yeah, it's even paler than us. It's like a heroin-addicted New York. I That's know. That's the feel of it. That's why I like it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you're right. It, it really is kind of... But, but I tell you, I, I did well over there just from speaking my in my accent. Like, though I, yeah. I was a mob guy. Yeah. I said, how you doing, London? Ah! You know. From I got laid over there, too, once. It was great. From the movies they saw, probably, they're like, ah, oh, we get it. <laughs> Italian, Italian guy. Yeah, no, they like the accent. Yeah. How do you do in Scandinavia when you do stand up? I just uh, adapt. I just say some things about them and, uh... <laughs> They, there's stand up. In the, in the, in the. Yeah. <laughs> stand up is so new there that they just applaud at anything. So it, it's is like, a, it is a newer thing to a lot of yeah. people. Don't realize, you know, that stand up is a uniquely American thing. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, uh, that's cool. We got to spread the word. Um, and you're doing you did Gotham. TV there though too. I did. I just did a TV show in Denmark. Yeah, doing stand up. What is that like? It what was, show? It was. Uh, I think it was called. Oh, it was called Casperin Lars Presenterer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Your dream. Your yeah. life. Oh, yeah. I am. I'm killing it. I am killing it. Well, there's a great American comic, uh, a real nomad. I love him. Uh, last time I saw him was about 11 years ago. He, he came through town. We worked together at the old uh, Tempe, Arizona Improv, and he said he was coming by to do the Stress Factory in Jersey. I said, "Hang with me." He's the kind of guy I lived on couches. A guy named Tom Rhodes. Mm -hmm. Really used to kill it in the uh, late 90s. And uh, mid '90s, he had his own sitcom for a little while. Uh, he used to have long hair, good-looking guy, and um, he stayed with me. And I, again, I said goodbye to him that weekend. The 11 years I haven't seen him, he goes up. But he, for a while, was like the David Letterman of Amsterdam. He did a late-night show, real insanely popular. Oh, I've heard yeah. In Amsterdam, and my God, the stories he had was just insane. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. it might be fun just to go over there and hang. Yeah. If you can adapt, you know what I mean. Be the Letterman of Amsterdam for a yeah. little while. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna give myself like three more years to make it here, and then I'm gonna just try and be. <laughs> David Hasselhoff. Well, how is it going? You, you and director Jesse Scaturo. Yeah, he, we grew up together. He's a childhood buddy. And we, what are his credits? He, uh, he, well, he's not in comedy at all. He was in advertising. He uh -huh. was a creative director in advertising. And we just started making like short films on the internet, and then we just formed this production company, and we do like ditch films. Ditch films, yeah. So you do little shorts and stuff. We do shorts, yeah. Just That's internet fun. stuff. Yeah, it's great. yeah, it's fun. Yeah, you and, get a lot of hits. Well, two two of the characters that I created kind of yeah they got a lot of hits and so I uh, people started paying to come see me. I got some I became a little bit of a draw. Well, not me, the characters. Yeah. I'm I'm not known at all. I'm the but least popular good, uh, of the three. That means like so you're a sketch guy too. You could do sketch comedy. I guess so. Yeah. That's good. You're versatile. I yeah. think because it says you do a lot of the best week ever and stuff, right? I did that the first time around. 
I tell and Chris, I got fired quick. I tell the Stefan, <laughs> why would happen? I just wasn't good did at you it. Say, or did you say I something just, offensive? No, it was just I wasn't good. I remember like. You the, probably were good at it. That was the problem. I guarantee you. You probably, <laughs> you probably said something interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. I just remember like you, the part of the job was like you have to watch the OC. I don't oh, know if you remember this. And oh. I tried to watch it, and I was just like, I can't. I quit. Yeah, I just said, I got nothing to say about the OC, my, except for I don't want to watch it. My buddy, uh, <laughs> my buddy, we did a sketch on Mad TV called uh, Casino Man. It was Encino Man and Casino put together. <laughs> and I played Joe Pesci. And I ended up doing a half-lame Joe Pesci, but it was like, it was passable. But I had to listen. The research department got me, you know, good fellows and Casino to listen to. Uh, my other buddy, David Herman, who plays Michael Bolton in Office Space, real funny guy. He had to do uh, Paulie Shore. So they gave him Paulie Shore stand-up act to listen to for two weeks, okay? <laughs> he walked around the lot in L.A. with a Walkman on, going, hey, buddy, hey, buddy, I quit, I quit, I'm done, I'm done! <laughs> Did a spot-on, amazing Paulie Shore. The only reason the sketch is halfway funny is because of his impression. Right, right. A spot-on that has never done it since, but he almost quit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if, they tell you, if you get a gig, you go, look, I'm happy to be on TV, but if my job is to watch the OC, come on! Yeah, I just couldn't get through it. I tell Chris, I tell <laughs> the Stefano, I tell the Stefano all the time, you got to be careful because what MTV's doing is they're putting a lot of these young comics. They want youth yeah. on these shows, like you know, uh, Guy Code, Girl Code, and you know, you're in front of a green screen and you comment on pop culture. And uh, they get kind of famous, and they get booked in these clubs, but a lot of these guys don't have 45 minutes oh. or an hour. You know, they're not real comedians yet. I mean, uh, Chris is not in that group, but I'm saying, you know, there's a lot of guys who don't have an act, and they throw them out there to the animals, and it's, it's they don't, they're not prepared for it. Right, right. You got to be careful, because you get famous without, you know, for making a few comments on a green screen, and... Uh, you know, you say a few things about the OC, and all of a sudden you're booked on the improv in uh, Jerkoffville, yeah. and you got to do an hour. Yeah. Do you have an hour of stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing comedy, uh, I guess, 13, 14 That's years. That's good, yeah, good. So yeah, you got In obscurity. Stuff. I was doing a lot of one-nighters with uh, Bichetti's manager, Sol Joel. Sol Joel, yeah. Sol Joel. Sol Joel. Sol Joel's a good guy. You know Bichetti? Yeah, I know Pog Bichetti. The honest is awesome, Marty. He really is. Good guy. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Bichetti. Bichetti. <laughs> No, no. Oh, and he's, he's just a regular guy who's super funny. You should see his stuff. He's great. Yeah, I know. He's just a regular guy who's super funny. Thank you. Yeah, I thought he... I, where everything about him screams royalty. You know? He's a regular guy. Yeah, I can tell. I like him. He's a good guy. Regular guy. I'm he's not like Tom Cruise. Yeah. Uh, well, that's good. I mean, it's really hard to, to think, like, in the world of comedy. If you know you're funny... You know, you, you, how long do you give yourself? Like, you know, it's like uh, my buddy Greg Fitzsimmons, great comic. He, he had an amazing idea for a show, but no one ever did it because I think they thought it was too mean. But it was called Dream Police, a reality show That's where great. where he would basically he, he, families would call the show and they'd say, look, we have someone in our family, a son, a nephew, a grandkid who's been trying to be an actor or a comedian or singer for 10 years now, and he's just a waiter, and we don't know how to tell him he has to quit. So basically the show would, like, surprise him at his job <laughs> and say, listen, your family thinks you're never going to go anywhere uh, and you have to quit. That's hilarious. <laughs> they called it Dream Police. I actually, but everybody, I mean, uh, they thought it was too mean. I think I knocked this out. No, you're all right. I'm we, okay? You we can hear, hear me? We I hear can you. hear myself. But yeah, we hear you. Uh, but, but like... Out. Oh. I'm like, oh. honey, honey boo boo. <laughs> that was a little too loud. Honey boo boo isn't mean. <laughs> like, the, no one wants to do dream police. You, like, you know, they go, listen, it's been 10 years. You got to start making money. Yeah. We're not sending you rent anymore. Yeah. You, I actually had a joke like that once where I said it would be great if, like, you could have a dream police, like, you hired kids from the projects, like the hipsters, like, they give them four years. Right. If your dream doesn't come true, you just hire a bunch of kids from the projects, <laughs> you just beat them up. <laughs> Send them back to That's the job. That's a better and version of it. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. right there, you need guys like you in the room. Yeah. You, just, you just, pardon the pun, punched it up. Tightened it up, yeah. Perfect. A little more violent, but <laughs> more efficient. Spade had an idea for a movie after Pimp My Ride came out. It was called Pimp My Bum. <laughs> you go to homeless people and, like, <laughs> and try to doll them up. It's called Pimp My Bum. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, something... Some, <laughs> well, my, my, now you have an idea yeah. for a show, but do you, do, do you uh, pitch pitch your show to Giannis? He has a production company. Yeah, what is it? 
Uh, Tubby Man. Yeah, uh, but a fat superhero, me. But here's the catch. It's got a very unique sort of positive message turned. I think it's a little too politically correct for the character. I think it should be more edgy, but the character specializes in beating up bullies, right? <laughs> Take, taking care of bullies and the jerk off, John, is real. Let me, no, 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 now, you're the head of this production company. I'm going to do a scene for you. You okay. ready? We're going to do like what we did before. I'll, I'll, me and, me and uh, John are going to be bullies. I'm going to bully John. We're two kids on a playground. And uh, I'm like 11 and John's nine. So I'm going to bully John and you okay. come in. This is an audition now. Giannis has a production. Yeah. Just... No, you have to run over. He's tubby, okay. man. All right. All right. Ready? I'll, I'll no, start. No, wait, wait. Is, is he uh, fly? <laughs> do you fly? He has no superpowers. He has no. martial no arts No superpowers. He's just tubby. Just martial arts. Okay. And he hates, and he, yeah, martial arts, of course. Well, how did I forget that? That's, <laughs> that's obvious. Okay, so he does know a little martial arts. <laughs> that part's obvious, all right? And action. Hey, man, that's a goofy shirt. What are you, a girl? You, that shirt makes you look like a girl. <laughs> hey, stop, guys. Everybody's an individual. But cut, I want, he has I a want, right I want, to win it. I want to cut. Let him talk. <laughs> okay, sorry. It's not all about Tubby, man. <laughs> okay, the best actors with other people. Right, okay. oh, I'll start over does again. Tubby, does Tubby man have a, a crooked collar? No, he... I like the Tubby man. I see you're edgy. You're, you're, you're imperfect. My favorite part is it took a long time for Tubby <laughs> man to get there. <laughs> you can really get away with a lot this of... This kid would already be addicted to heroin <laughs> by the time... Zach <laughs> <laughs> Richie's character would already be yeah. addicted to heroin by the time Tubby <laughs> man gets there. All right, you ready? Yeah, in action. Hey, what are you, a girl? That shirt makes you look like a girl. <laughs> Shut up. It's a hand-me-down from my sister. <laughs> hey, guys. It's his sister. Hey, hey come put... on. What? Stop it. Everybody else... I'm Tubby Man, Defender of the Week. Cut, and then... cut, cut. I want to cut again. I'm not weak. <laughs> you have to announce who you are. Yes, I, I just did. The first thing a superhero says is, I'm the superhero. I just said, I'm... I asked who you are. <laughs> I know. I just... Now you're just a fat guy interrupting Hold on. All right. Let's right. start this again. Let's start it again. I'm, so, I'm really sorry, Alice. No, no. As they had a digital. I like your notes. I like your notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, you shouldn't be just like a random obese guy who stops the fight. Yeah, you got to okay. come in with authority, too. <laughs> yeah. you know. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And action. Hey, what are you, a girl with that shirt? What a gay guy with the shirt. Look at the shirt. Ah! My parents are struggling. I found it in the lost and found. It's Screw cool. your parents. It's Tubby Man. To oh, rescue. God. God. Listen to this. Everybody has a right to be an individual on this planet. <laughs> his shirt is perfectly fine. So what? His mom's working four jobs to support him. What, are you, what, is your, what is your family doing for you? It's okay if they're mistreating you. I'll help you out, son. It's okay if my family's mistreating I'll, me. I'll make, I'll make sure I'll call it a uh, child welfare. Is that why he's so mean? Because he's getting mistreated, Tommy Probably. Man? You know what? We, why don't we all go for malted and settle this, guys? All for what? A malted or a shake. A malt? Do you think? Do you think that's a good message when you look like you do? For children? Do you think? Me, do you think you look like you? You ribs. look like you. I look like me. And you suggest getting a malted? Let's get a smorgasbord together. Let's get let's get a jamba juice together and just settle this. Maybe a smoothie. Like yeah, it. let's get a jamba juice. Let's go to old country buffet. Uh, I, I yeah, love food like sex. I really feel. I, I don't know. I really feel you blew the audition with this film. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I that's okay. was, he, he does have a powerful presence. Though, he right? did. I mean, a, he has, definitely has a je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Thank you, guys. To him. Let me get back to. I'm to say wow. He's I got love, some gravitas. Well, I you know what? How rest he up, read, Mike. Rest up. I loved how he read into your bully character. He did. And really got to the bottom of like it. Like my parents were screwing with me. Yes. Yeah.